hey what's up so this is the third video now what we need to do is to write some code to dispatch and thunk action to fetch some data so I will try to make this as simple as possible so first thing we need to create another feature called dashboard for the dashboard tab okay so create a folder called dashboard and inside of it create the dashboard slice so features are basically the components that have a slice or have something to do in the store. And now we have the dashboard component to JS. And I have an extension called React Redux GraphQL React Native Snippets. So it's very cool because I can now do RAC or RAFCP and it will give me the spoiler plate. I don't care about the props validation and that's, that's it and now our slice this is most of this uh, this is most of the work will be here so import the create a slice and the create a sync func from the redux toolkit now if you go to our app dot constant then you will see i have same some constants this is the endpoint for the api as you can see this one and this is two enums this is how or this is a way to create enums in javascript you will just freeze an object let me show you what will happen when you freeze an object so const a so let's say a key equal to one just like that but before we define it let's just call object dot freeze and pass that object for it so now it will be just a single uh, a normal object but if you try to add something to it it won't work as you can see so a would say hi we equal to function that will alert but a will stay the same and if i think if you try to delete it will give you false but yeah so a dot key equal now to a will stay the same so freeze will make an object uh, like i think it will just freeze it so it will stay the same no matter what you do so it's just a way that I am telling other developers, hey, this is an enum, don't mess around with it. Just leave it as it is. Just use it if you want to reference a specific value. Yeah, that's it. So we have the HTTP statuses, we have pending, fulfilled, rejected, we have the sitemap tabs. These are these. So let's just import the HTTP status and the API URL in the dashboard slice like this. Now we need to install Axios. So just type in your terminal of course npm install axios i already did that if you are working with me on the same repo we already have it so just install it just import it like this now the actual ported part so export export const fetch dash fetch dashboard data this is how i will call it will be equal to create sync func and now this accepts, if you remember in the overview, two things. A string, which is the action type. This will be, or this, I will call this dashboard. Then the name of the function, like this. The second thing, it should be a, a function that retains a promise. So a fast way to do it, to just have an async. Async, when you have an async function, it will always return a promise in this case literally like this here it will return a promise of void but if i done this it will return a promise that resolves to a one which is the one value in the previous like this it will resolve to a void to nothing undefined so yeah that's very uh, nice feature in javascript this is like a shorter syntax for writing promises and we have the await syntax which, which makes it even better so now const data would be equal to await axios to get so let's inject the api url then forward slash dashboard i will format the code with prettier but of course if you wrap this in a parentheses now we have data so i will destruct it because this will return an object with the response i will destruct the data like this now just return data and now this thunk will resolve or the payload when it's being resolved for the reducer will be this data i think it will make sense when we write more code so now let's create the dashboard slice 
will be equal to create slice except an object name will be dashboard like this but since we are writing dashboard again and again so let me create a variable called namespace and let's inject this one here and here sorry here and here so by the way this syntax or this character is called back stick you can inject the strings in, in the middle of it with this syntax like this and this character is next to the one keyword or key key in your keyboard yes yeah, next to the one key in your keyboard i'll keep this open so this is the name of the slice the initial state will be loading null and data null loading to track the loading states, state of the HTTP request our reducers will be empty but our extra reducers we will have some of them so first thing we need to handle the pending state the pending action sorry the pending action for this thunk so get the name of the thunk put this uh, syntax in an object this means a dynamic key so it will try to resolve the value here and put it as a key so we have pending and this should point to an object you can to a function sorry you can do this this syntax or this whichever you like I like this one so state and it can have a period but since it's a pending action it won't have a payload of course okay so it's just like this and what I will do here I will put state Dot loading will be equal to HTTP status, which is this dot pending. And now I will do the same, but for fulfilled, the first argument is always the state in the reducers and the extra reducers. The payload, of course, this will be an action inside of it. You will have a type and the payload, but you can just destruct the payload like this. And now state dot loading will be equal to HTTP status dot fulfilled. Now state dot data will be equal to payload. Now the third thing is the fetch dashboard dot rejected. This will be state, and state dot loading will be equal to rejected, just like that. So now let's just export the reducer from the slice. I think we all know how to do it. You can export the default export like this or just have a, name, a named export. I will do the default export. So let's go to our store and import it. So import dashboard reducer from go back, go features, then dashboard, then the dashboard slice. And now here we will have dashboard will point to our reducer. And that's it so if you go now to our app you should see if you go to redux we should see a state with two keys dashboard and the app side down. this is for this and the dashboard we will fill it now so first thing we will go to our dashboard component we need to import multiple things first thing is from react redux is the use dispatch hook and let's use it here like this and we need also to import the thunk right so import from next to it the dashboard slice the fetch dashboard data and of course I think you know that but if we did do this this will stuck in an infinite loop. Uh, maybe, I mean, it's not, not quite sure, but it, this uh, will be executed every time this dashboard will be rendered. Uh, it could be an infinite loop uh, if you are updating something inside this state or if you are causing this component to be re-rendered from this action or from dispatching this action, it you will stuck an, in an infinite loop. But I don't think it will happen in our case. Uh, I don't want to try because I don't want my like my recording and everything to crash so I'll just show you the solution you will use use effect so anything that does has nothing to do with 
rendering the component should be added inside a use effect or anything could block rendering the component and for a dependency an empty array this means that this will only be called one time when this component be rendered and that's it only one time empty array means that uh, and basically this empty or this array of dependency it's called dependencies each time one of them have a reference change the code inside the use effect will be called again it's like monitoring everything you put here and any reference have been changed it will call the function inside the use effect but if you give it an empty array it will call it only one time and that's it when the component of course renders the first time yeah so even if ha even if any re-render happened again this won't be called only the first time and this, as if, as you, if you hover over this, it will tell you to put the dispatch function here. Uh, you don't need to put it because this will always have the, have the same reference, so it's pointless to put it here. But you can do do it, but it's, it's pointless. So now we need to import this dashboard function inside our app and render it there. This is where our everything, uh, where everything in our app uh, is here. But uh, before this, we need to export it in a specific way. So, I will. If you look inside our app side now, so we have this index file that exports. So this is how I usually organize my code. I have folder and if I organize by feature. So everything for the app side now, logic is here. And if, if you need anything from this folder to this directory outside from it, for example, in the app. I will have an index file that exposes these kind of things for you. So it's just, I think some people do this as well, but this is how I do it. And I am exporting this component, the upside nav, as the default from this file. So to import it, to export it as a named export, I will do this syntax, which is very nice. So I will do the same for the dashboard. Like this. And now, also, for the whole features, I have another index file that I will export from as well. So export from the dashboard. And this, by default, will point to index, so you can remove this. And export the dashboard component. Let's go to our app. As you can see, I'm importing from features out of these. Import the dashboard component. And let's just render it here. But we need to only render it when the dashboard tab had been clicked. So I'm storing these types inside of this uh, map or this enum. And you can do it like this. So if the selected tab, which comes from the, from the use selector hook, which uses this selector, it goes to the app side nav, app side nav slice and go to the selected uh, string. So if this selected tab equal to the side nav tabs to dashboard display this dashboard component else display an empty string there is a shorter syntax for this if the left side always retains a boolean which means always false or true not falsey or truthy just boolean you can do this and and true and and uh, display the dashboard so this means if this is a true it will go execute the next command if this is false it won't do anything or it will return undefined and this won't be uh, or I think it will return false and this won't be rendered to anything so yeah this is a shorter syntax but remember this should always return uh, true or false there's a, a, a trick to do that just put it inside these two explanation mark but uh, since mine will always return true or false I'll keep it like this so it will sh it should work now so let's go to our network tab Click on dashboard, you should see that we have a request that have been dispatched or have been fired. So let's go to see our Redux state. I think, yeah, it's like this. So this selected, this change selected tab happened when we clicked here, but now it's the pending, as you can see the pending action. And remember this dashboard fish, dashboard data prefix, if you go to the documentation, it tells us that they do, they will do this for us. So it generates a promise lifecycle action based on the type action, based on the action type prefix you pass in. So if you remember, we passed in our dashboard slice, we passed this, this is the action 
uh, type we passed and it will go and put the state of the promise after it so first one and dispatch of course are the correct action the correct action uh, for that life cycle of the promise so we have pending and this is the difference now loading is pending we have now fulfilled loading is fulfilled and data is this array which is very nice so I think now we can just display the data or display some loading spinners and stuff like that I'll make it very fast I'm using react suit uh, it's a very good library I think it's uh, I think no one gives it the enough attention it, uh, it deserves but I think I will end it now I think this is a good introduction in the next video I will display the data Bye.